Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of Mega Projects. This one is all about a really big tunnel. It's quite impressive. Also impressive is the merch that is available through the Mega Projects merch store, which is linked to below. It's got blueprints of stuff that we've covered on this channel. This is the A12. There's other stuff as well. Check it out, link below. Let's get into it. Very deep in the Alps lies an engineering marvel that sits at the very pinnacle of human achievement. A tunnel that reaches a maximum depth of 2,450 meters, that's about 8,000 feet, a distance that is comparable to some of the deepest mines on Earth. It also stretches for over 57 kilometers, that's about 35 miles, making it both the deepest and the longest railway tunnel in the world. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the Gotthard Base Tunnel, GBT, which stretches from Erzfeld, Bodio, and Switzerland took some time to complete. The 17-year construction process began in 1999 and culminated in 2016, and it removed roughly 31 million tons of rock, enough to build five Great Pyramids of Giza. In terms of what humans have done with tunnels, this currently stands alone. It was a vast, expensive undertaking, but in the most typically Swiss way, it came in on budget and on time. The question of how best to scale the mighty mountain range, which straddles six different countries, is age-old. The Gotthard Pass has been used as a trading route between southern and northern Europe since the 13th century. The 2,106-meter-high pass did not receive its first proper road until 1822. Even by 1842, when the Gotthard Post, a stagecoach with ten seats, rumbled along it daily, a journey between Como in Italy and Fluelin in Switzerland, a distance on today's roads of just 162 kilometers, took 23 hours. The Gotthard Railway Tunnel opened in 1882 and dramatically reduced travel time through the Alps in this area. The electrification of the line in 1922 sped up the journey even further as better, faster trains could now quickly pass through the jagged peaks. But there was also some competition. A young upstart known as the Automobile was proving to be wildly popular around the world. The first recorded instance of a car passing the Gotthard Pass is believed to have come in 1901 and it still took more than a day. The Gotthard Road Tunnel, itself an incredibly impressive piece of engineering, measuring 16.9 kilometers and reaching 1,080 meters underground, opens for traffic in 1980 and remains one of the most important road routes on the north-south axis through the Alps. It is also incredibly popular, with traffic along the route rising tenfold after its opening. The tunnel reached its traffic capacity in 2013, and work is scheduled to begin on a twin tunnel sometime this year, 2020. And now excellent roads are all well and good, but they came with a huge increase in cargo transportation. The old railway line with its tight curves and awkward tunnels was not a place to be lugging huge amounts of freight. In 1922, the Swiss people voted in a referendum on the question of whether to build a new flat railway tunnel that would barrel straight through the mountains with little to no gradient increase or decrease. The proposal passed with 64% approval and the GBT took a giant stride towards reality. The Swiss are certainly no slouches when it comes to tunnels. The GBT might be the current longest railway tunnel in the world, but it is a title that the Swiss have held on three separate occasions. The original Gotthard Tunnel was first, opening in 1882 and measuring 15 kilometers. Second was the Simplon Tunnel, measuring 19.8 kilometers, which was completed in 1905. But the new tunnel would blow everything else out of the water. The goal of the GBT was to relieve the crowded roads and lower the number of large freight containers being transported on the highways. At the time, over a million trucks every year made their way over the mountains, which, to be honest, isn't exactly how you imagine the Swiss Alps. Switzerland was seeing vast amounts of late 20th century traffic using a road system that was designed in the 1960s. The aim was to provide the final piece of flat route from the ports of the North Sea to those on the Mediterranean. The GBT would use conventional rail transportation, but also rolling highways where the trucks are loaded onto trains and moved as one unit. The design called for two tunnels to be built, one which normally sees trains heading north and the other in the southbound direction. The route had to be considered carefully and would avoid burrowing under the highest mountains where possible because of weight issues. A total 
total of five years and 115 million Swiss francs was spent on fieldwork, drilling soil samples, and a comprehensive remote sensing survey map before a final route was decided. You don't need me to tell you that this was an absolutely mammoth undertaking. To speed up construction, four access tunnels were built so that meant work could commence from four different locations simultaneously in Ersfeld, Amsteg, Sedrun, and Fido, while a fifth in Bodio was later added. The two tunnels are connected by galleries every 325 meters, and trains can move between the tunnels at Sedrun and Fido stations, both of which act as emergency stopping areas and evacuation routes. Entry into the Sedrun drilling location came via a one-kilometer-long access tunnel from the valley floor. At the end of the tunnel lies two vertical shafts which drop 800 meters down to the GBT level. That's almost twice the height of the Empire State Building, by the way. The excavation work to dig the tunnels measuring between 8.83 and 9.58 meters in diameter was a painstaking process, with work passing through no less than 73 different kinds of rock, ranging from hard granite to rock so soft it resembled sugar. It could also get a little toasty down there, with temperature in the rocks found 2.3 kilometers below the surface, reaching 46 degrees Celsius. With the huge differences in rock side, the digging speed varied greatly. At the maximum daily excavation, the tunnel boring machines TBMs, could get through 25 to 30 meters, but it was often much, much less. The four Herrenkonecht Gripper TPMs originated in Germany. S210 and S211, nicknamed Sissy and Heidi, operated northbound from Bodio to Fado and Sedrun, while S229 and S230, known as Gabby 1 and Gabby 2, dug southbound from Erstfeld to Sedrun. Each measured 440 meters, with their backup equipment around the same length as four football pitches, and weighed a colossal 3,000 tons, roughly twice the weight of the giant redwood trees found in California. When these giants were working at their peak, they were each consuming the equivalent energy of 5,000 suburban homes in the United States every single day. A titanic creeping monster known as the worm was used to apply the concrete lining to the tunnels while also laying the drainage pipes and measuring nearly 600 meters in length. The amount of concrete used in the tunnels was staggering. The 4 million cubic meters would be enough to construct 84 Empire State Buildings, while the copper wiring that stretches throughout the tunnels measures a total of 3,200 kilometers, about half the distance between New York and London. Not only were the five sections constructed separately, but they were also done by a variety of different companies who had bid on the project. The Erstfeld section measured 7.7 .7 kilometers and ran from Erstfeld to Amsteg. When the section was completed in June 2009, it came in just five millimeters short of what had been planned. Amsteg. This contract was awarded to ARG AGN and measured 11.3 kilometers from Amsteg to just north of Sedrun. Split into two sections, including 8.6 kilometers in the east tube and 8.7 kilometers in the west tube, this portion of the line extended north and south from Sedrun and was carried out by Transco. Extending 13.4 kilometers east tube and 13.6 kilometers west tube south from Sedrun to Fido, and it was completed by Consorzio TAT. Bodio. The longest sections completed the Bodio line ran for 15.9 km east tube and 15.6 km west tube and was also constructed by Consorzio TAT. The two sections that would incorporate the East Tube met on the 15th of October 2010, with a very Channel Tunnel-esque moment aired on live television. And by the way, we've done a whole video here on Mega Projects about the Channel Tunnel, also an incredible achievement. Uh, I will link to that video below. The West Tube saw its breakthrough on the 23rd of March 2011. On August the 30th, 2013, a diesel train traveled through the tunnel for the first time from Bodio to Erstfeld in six hours. At this point, we're still three years away from its opening, which tells of the astonishing level of safety check that were carried out within the tunnels. On December the 16th, 2013, the test phase started on a stretch of the southern section of the West Tube between Fido and Bodio, measuring 13 kilometers. On the 31st of October 2014, the railway track installation was finally completed and a gold sleeper was set on the final section of track. Just under a year later, on the 1st of October 2015, the first full-scale tests were carried out along the entire length of the GBT. This was a process of slowly increasing the train's speed, and on the 8th of November, a train traveling through the tunnels reached its top speed of 275 kilometers an hour.
Before official festivities got underway, there was a more solemn ceremony. Nine people had died during the construction of the GBT. One South African, one Austrian, three Italians, and four Germans. A plaque in their honor was unveiled on the 31st of May 2016, and a shrine to St. Barbara, the patron saint of miners, sits just inside the tunnel. The following day, the president of the Confederation, Johann Schneider Amann, declared the GBT a giant leap for Switzerland, but equally for our neighbors and the rest of the continent. The first official journey carried hundreds of Swiss citizens lucky enough to win tickets, while events on the surface received over 100,000 visitors over the weekend. It takes roughly 20 minutes to travel from Erstfeld to Bodio through the GBT today. The trains are roughly divided between two-thirds freight and one-third passengers, and a single day sees up to 260 trains pass through it. The travel time between Milan and Zurich has been shortened by 35 minutes and currently stands at 3 hours and 26 minutes, though there are plans to use a special service that will reduce that time to 2 hours and 45 minutes. Broadly speaking, the tunnel has been a success, with the only sour point that seems to have come up is the overcrowding at peak times during the early years when the trains sometimes ran at 140 percent capacity in the most orderly swiss way the issues have been ironed out with an increase in trains and also their size There's an interesting quirk about the GBT, in that areas around both portals, in and out of the tunnels, speak different languages. If you plunge into the Alps from Ersfeld in the north, you leave a German-speaking part of Switzerland. You reappear, blinking in the sunlight, at Bodio, where they speak Italian. But it's not just the language that differs. The Alps are famous for dividing the weather. A rainy day in Ersfeld may mean a sunny day in Bodio, and vice versa. But typically, the south has it roughly two to three degrees warmer than the other side of the the tunnel, but there are days when this can be well over 10 degrees. The mighty GBT cost $12.5 billion to construct. That's the entire GDP of Nicaragua, just in case you were interested, making it one of the most expensive engineering projects in recent history. But what they did with that money is just staggering. There's something truly awe-inspiring about mountains. Maybe it's the enormous physical boundary they provide, or the hellish challenge that they put in front of us that we humans find utterly intoxicating, especially when we reach the peak and stare down at what we've conquered. Humans have forever been drawn to mountains, whether it was for safety, a challenge, or simply just a beautiful view. But they have always provided us with that immovable object. And while we still can't move them, we now have the power to go straight through them. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, smash that like button below. Please do subscribe to this channel. Brand new videos three times a week. Also, if you've got a suggestion for a future mega projects, please do use the comments below. Most of the subjects that we cover here at Mega Projects are your suggestions, so please do do that. Also, if you'd like to buy some fine merch, there is a link below. And thank you for watching.